Do you have an explosion of white worms in your aquarium? Might be planaria. Keep watching as I talk about four effective ways of getting rid of them. So the first time I encountered planaria was when I got some java fern from a local uh, fish keeper and it looks like they hitchhiked along. So when I saw them, they weren't the same as detritus worms. So detritus worms look more like small white wiggly eyelashes, like about that thin and that short, mostly in the substrate, sometimes randomly swimming in the water versus planaria are these like, I mean, the ones I saw got about an inch long. They can either be white or sometimes brown, uh, mostly crawling on the glass, kind of like a inchworm or a caterpillar or something. Definitely has that distinctive arrow shaped head and two eyes. Ooh. And so what I did was I found out that you could actually dip your plants in alum. So I will link the plant dip um, experiment down in the description in the card over here. But the concentration I used, which is great for delicate plants, is one tablespoon of alum per one gallon of water. And then you lo let it soak for three days. Or you can try a more concentrated formula, which is three tablespoons of alum per one gallon of water. And then you only need to soak it for three hours. Now let's say you're in the situation where they've already gotten into your aquarium and they're everywhere. So the second time I saw Planaria, you know, I've been dipping my plants in alum forever. So they actually hitchhiked with the shrimp. I was setting up a shrimp breeding tank and when I was looking at the shrimp I bought, I noticed there were some other small creatures in there. I don't know what. So I was trying to individually net out all the shrimp, but apparently not only Planaria, but also seed shrimp got into my shrimp breeding tank. Of course, since it was a shrimp breeding tank, I wanted to make sure the babies were doing well. So I was feeding a lot of Bacter AE, which is a powder food great for babies. Unfortunately, the sea shrimp and Planaria really liked it too. So there's a population explosion of both. And overfeeding is definitely one reason uh, why, you'll see, why you'll see a lot of Planaria, but apparently they also sometimes like to snack on baby shrimp as well. So definitely had to get rid of them. So method number one of getting rid of planaria is to feed the aquarium less and to make sure you're gravel vacuuming regularly. Once I decreased the feedings of Bacter AE to once a week, have the amount I was using, I still saw some seed shrimp, but definitely didn't spot any more planaria, which was great. Yay! So around the time I saw the first planaria in my shrimp tank, a company called Senzil contacted me and they were like, hey, do you want to review one of our aquarium lights? And I was like, no <laughs> and they're like wait wait we have other aquarium products you could check out so i went on their website scrolled along and i was like oh planaria trap i'll take that uh looks like their amazon reviews are pretty good and legit so i was like sure i'll work with you waited two weeks opened up the mail and got this an aquarium light <laughs> i was like wait that's not what i wanted so got in contact with them again, had to wait another two weeks, and then I got this. Okay, this is actually the planaria trap. So how this little doodad works is it's a glass tube with a lid on it. You're supposed to put some bait in it, whether it's like raw chicken breast or frozen bloodworms in my case, seal it up, and then you rest the trap on the substrate so that the planaria can get in, but the shrimp can't. And just word of warning, when you're putting this in the tank, make sure to cover all the holes with your finger and then let a little bit of water gently in, or like me, all the blood worms are gonna fall out. Uh, same thing when you're taking the trap out too. Cover all the holes with your finger while gently lifting it out. Unfortunately, by the time I actually got the tube, there was no more planary that I could see in the shrimp tank to catch, so I didn't actually get anything with it. But I've seen lots of hobbyists be successful with this type of trap. So if you're looking for a natural way to get rid of planaria, method number two is try the planaria trap, link down in the description. Give it a shot. All right, method number three is chemical warfare. So I obviously did not have to use this method, but you can go all out with fenbendazole. And the uh, common concentration you see online is 0.1 grams per 10 gallons. So in this case, in the United States, you can buy Panicure C Canine Dewormer from eBay 
It says the active ingredient is 22.2% Fembendazole granules. And specifically, you wanna get the one that comes in the one gram packets. And so what you're gonna do is take one gram of this. Some people recommend putting it in a Ziploc bag and then finally um, grinding it up using a rolling pin. You're gonna dump that packet into 100 milliliters of water. So hopefully your measuring cup has milliliters on it. And then you wanna mix it really, 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 really well. So again, one suggestion is to pour that solution into an empty water ball and just shake it a lot, a lot, a lot forever. After that, where is it? You can get a 10 milliliter syringe. So I got this from my local pharmacy and it's basically a shot of 10 milliliters for every 10 gallons or one milliliter for every one gallon. So you're gonna squirt that into your aquarium. It is shrimp safe and apparently not only kills planaria, but also kills detritus worms and hydra. If you're still having problems with planaria, some people recommend waiting anywhere from one to three days to redose the tank with the same concentration, no water changes in between. And then other people said to turn off the lights on the aquarium because that apparently deactivates the fembendazole. There are other chemical solutions like no planaria and other dewormers as well. So don't know if they're shrimp safe, do your own research. Method number four of defeating planaria is add some fish. <laughs> so obviously that may not be possible if you're doing a shrimp breeding tank like I am, but I recently decided to take down that tank and sell all the fish at my local fish auction, as well as the celestial pearl danias that I did a tutorial on recently. So what did I replace them with? I went to my local fish store and unfortunately they only had male inlers live bearers. I was really hoping for some females to do another breeding project, but bought a bunch of them and I was like, hey, I have this empty shrimp tank, a former shrimp tank here to use as quarantine, put them in there. And yeah, they demolished all of the hundreds if not thousands of seed shrimp that were still there, as well as probably any planaria that might be remaining. Thanks again to Sinzeal for sending me this Planaria chapter review. If you're interested in learning about another kind of pest to get rid of, check out my plant dip tutorial over here for snails and snail eggs. Also, if you enjoy this kind of action-packed, to-the-point aquarium tutorial, make sure to subscribe over here so I show up in your feed. Take time to enjoy your aquariums, and I'll see you in the next video.